Now guys, I did not intend for this video to start this way, but the performance results that this M4 convertible LCI have shown me, have shaken me to my core. Watch this. My friends, that is 3.1 seconds. I can't believe it. My friends, that was 3.1 seconds. When I've tested the lighter M3 xDrive at 3.4, the M3 Touring at 3.5, this is quicker than the RS6 GT that we tested at 3.3. It's quicker than Vantage, quicker than DB12. It's as fast as AMD's SL63. What is this LCI update that has made a car that's meant to be doing 3.7, 3.1 seconds? So clearly more than meets the eye to this update. We're gonna continue the drive in a minute. First, let's go over the LCI update to remind you what makes the G-Series M4. Then we'll come back on the road. So as today's episode of RBR is once again sponsored by NordVPN. Now a lot of phones and devices have inbuilt VPNs now, but the control that Nord has always given us, like choosing your region, which for me has been brilliant because when I've been abroad and I wanna access my UK Crunchyroll or Netflix library or watch history, then it's easy to do. And it gives me peace of mind on using public Wi-Fi's, protecting my data, my cards, et cetera, et cetera. So it's great as a VPN. But one product these guys have done recently that has been game changing for things other than VPN is this thing called threat protection. Now this is something you can turn on without turning on the VPN. And what Nord essentially wanted to do was make your internet browsing experience like it used to be back in the good old days when you didn't have these horrible websites with malicious ads, ads you can't get rid of, and these websites that would track you and make a profile about you. Tell me if this hasn't happened to you, like I was searching for coffee machines, and for the next 20 days, all you see everywhere is coffee machine ads. And it's really annoying. Threat protection puts an end to all of that. It puts an end to the profiling, it gets rid of the malicious malware on these websites. Heck, it will even scan files you download for you to make sure they are safe for extra peace of mind. It's also really easy to turn on. Let me show you how to do it. It's within the NordVPN app itself. All you do, you go into the app. You don't need to turn on the VPN if you don't want to. You hit this shield button here, and then you've got threat protection, knock it on, and that is it. It can be turned on independently of your VPN. So there you go, so easy. And then you've got a much more peaceful internet browsing experience. And if you turn on the VPN, even better, because you've got that much more protection. Now, of course, as an RBR viewer, I've got you a great deal. Use the link below and go to NordVPN forward slash RBR. And on a two year plan, you'll get four months extra free. And for peace of mind, you got Nord's 30 day money back guarantee as well. So well worth trying it. So that's nordvpn.com forward slash RBR. And you'll just have a more peaceful browsing experience. Guys, a huge thanks to you guys for always supporting our amazing regular sponsors. Now let's get back to the car. Now look, I know what it's like. Many of us scoff at the idea of a performance drop top. And at the same time, we all get teary eyed and emotional about the original M3, the E30. But did you know that the convertible M3 series, which this is basically the successor of, is the most enduring body style across the history of the M3. We've had it since the E30, we had it in E36, E46, then in our hardtop versions of the E92 and the F83, leading all the way till today. While we have had fluctuations in whether you had a sedan or not, or whether it would be a coupe, of course we've never had a wagon until now, the convertible has been a mainstay in the M3 lineup from day one. And that's because BMW M customers love this dichotomy of having open air luxury on one side and then motorsport learning on the other. Two clashing concepts that seem to, for some reason, work so well in the M3 and now the M4. Now the basis is amazingly solid. I don't think M have ever modified a three or four series as much as they have in this generation to make the M version. With this one, it starts with the MX drive. I think that's the most important point. So it's all wheel drive. And now your M4 and M4 convertible only come in X drive. And why not? Because we found it to be hardly with any negatives. A little bit of steering numbness, but you've got all the year round use with the all wheel drive and you can switch to rear wheel drive mode whenever you want. 
Then we got M's adaptive suspension, which is brilliant in comfort and in sport. We got the variable braking IB system, as they call it. So you have levels of braking you can choose in the system as well. We've got the eight speed torque converter gearbox that does a really good impression of a dual clutch. We've got tons of stiffening, torsion bars, shear panels, and then our convertible gets unique ones as well to help increase that stiffening that we so desperately need. And then of course the main event, the lovely three liter inline six engine, 3D printed technology, twin monoscroll turbos, a fantastic racing engine that now in the LCI is 20 horsepower more powerful. So we've got 530 horsepower, the same 650 Newton meters that are now available over a wider rev range and a claim zero to 60 that we have absolutely destroyed of 3.7 seconds. So is that power bump only 20 or is it a lot more in reality. I would love to dyno one of these one day and actually find out. But that's only 20 horsepower away from the new CS as well. So altogether, in terms of a performance package, really, really damn impressive. Also bear in mind then that this is your heaviest version of this car at two tons dead, which makes it almost 200 kg heavier than the equivalent M4. Despite that, it's doing those great performance figures. And we will see how it drives when we go out in just a second. Then we come to the LCI changes themselves and they're quite little. We've only got new lights on the front, which to be fair, bring them in line with the rest of the new BMW lineup. I quite like them actually. I know a lot of people don't, but I like the sveltness of it and I like, and they've got a certain aggressive look. What's even better than the front lights are the rear lights that are reserved only for the M4. These are stolen straight off the CSL of the pre-LCI so M4 and M4 convertible customers, very happy. It's just such a shame that M3 and M3 Touring didn't get their own lights because of course M3 CS didn't either. A bit of laziness there by BMW M, I think. But yeah, really good news for M4 customers. And the last few sprinkles of change on the outside are these glossy new badges. And then we get a choice of these new silver wheels, which are actually really nice. Now bear in mind, if you're shopping around for M4, everything I mentioned here applies to your M4 LCI as well. The only difference is the weight of this car. But as you'll see later, this actually drives pretty damn well as well. So the coupe can only be better. There's a lot more different inside, particularly at the start of the pre-LCI cars compared to this. We'll go into that in a sec. I want to first talk to you about the roof. So guys, roof, let's talk about it. 18 seconds to open and close. And yes, I know it's a soft top, but this particular soft top is 40% lighter than the hard top that it replaces which of course is half the game when it comes to cabriolets because you need to keep that weight down. The great thing about it is it still uses a glass rear screen rather than those horrible plastic screens that deteriorate over time. We've also got a panel structure in our roof instead of the typical bars that used to be used in the past, which is why it maintains such a flush finish that I've barely ever seen on another convertible. And I actually really like the fact that it links so nicely to those more heritage cars. I personally prefer the look of soft tops because no hard top ever looks as good as the coupes unless it's some kind of supercar. So yes, I like the classic look. Standard seats will get you an air collar system, but we don't have that because we've got the lovely M carbon bucket seats instead. And the nice thing is versus again, the previous gen, you get about 0.2 inches more headroom, which is always welcome. And now when the roof folds up, it folds up in a more compact way as well which you should be interested in because that's going to affect the boot space. Let me show you the boot space inside. Right, boot space. Good thing is that the boot does open by itself and you can see it's fairly limited as you would expect of a convertible. There is this element here which can be folded away when you have the roof up, but you have to pull it down when you want to fold the roof back down. But that gives you significantly more space actually. But when you fold that down, you get significantly more space when you need it as well. So that's good for practicality. Now, just before I jump in, a word of appreciation for the spec that we have on this M4 Cabriolet today. Beautiful Isle of Man green metallic with the white and black combo and full carbon interior package. Just looks incredible as an M4 convertible combination. This is a beautiful interior. It is, in my opinion, class leading. In fact, I think with the 4 Series in general, it's a class above because the way it's trimmed is on par with 8 Series pretty much. And the structure and the seats and everything is just much more modern. 
I can seldom find a reason to now go to 8 series versus this, particularly considering how great the performance of the M versions is, as you'll see in a second when we go out. But yeah, this is still a great interior. Now, pre-LCI looked a lot different on this front dashboard, particularly the early ones, because we had the two separate screens, one cowl and one smaller screen, as we used to have previously in F-Series. Then we had a slight refresh in the middle, which gave customers this screen as well. But this one is now even further beyond that. So if you're looking at pre-LCI, this can look totally different. Mid of pre-LCI, I know it's getting complicated, not as different. Now we have not only the screen, we've got all new vents here, which look incredible. An amazing steering wheel, which I absolutely love. So guys, this is a really great interior. What's changed here is of course the vents. They look fantastic with the ambient lighting, particularly within this area, especially at night. And when you're driving, it looks really, really cool. It looks so cool, in fact, I kind of wish that this was the front grille because um, it's really nicely shaped. And that whole light effect, particularly with the green light matching our spec here, looks great. Now, the big screen is probably one of the best screens I've ever used. This is BMW's operating system 8.5. And in this one, it's 8.5 M. And it's a completely different screen than you'll find in standard BMWs or even the 7 series because it's skinned to be more BMW M. It's got these aggressively aligned widgets with like the M1 showing your tire pressures. You've got your drive modes, live view, which I absolutely love, which shows you exactly what the car is doing live as it says. But it's really cool to watch the indicators and the wheels turning and the wheels moving and like with the roof off, etc. But this M skin I find to be one of the best and the easiest to use in any car manufacturing system. The touch points are really nice and big. It's all easy to kind of navigate around. And while we've lost some buttons down here versus pre-LCI, you can just swipe down and set your own shortcuts up here. So all of that is great. And you still maintain the brilliant BMW iDrive setup system here where you can quickly access all of your M settings and then save whatever you want into either M1 or M2 over here. Then, if we pop the car on, our driver zone as well benefits from that M skin, where it's got specific BMW M looks. So for example, if we go into M mode here and we choose Sport, it shifts into this, and then you can customize what you see around here. Long-time viewers would have seen this a lot throughout the reviews. And again, I find this operating system personally to be one of the best out there. I'll tell you what as well, CarPlay looks big on this, but it's a nice size. What's quite cool is you actually get Apple Maps now inside your driver zone as well, which is pretty awesome. I didn't actually realize that you can do that. But my favorite thing in here by far is this new steering wheel. It is so much better. It's based on the one that you see in the new M5 and it's flat bottom for the first time finally. A little bit thick in some areas and then you've got the wonderful thick 12 o'clock marker like you'd find in the CS cars. Still got your M1, M2. More than that is how they've reduced the bulk and made this beautiful carbon spoke structure here with the M logo. You've still got good buttons and the carbon shifter paddles back here. Carbon all along the sides here, but the overall shape and everything is much more sporty than what we had before. Now guys, all of this is fine, but we need to go out back on the road because this car was so fast. Let me show you what it's like now, dynamically and living day to day. The modern drop top is a dying breed. There's so few of them but the ones that do exist have become so much better than what we were used to. It was only a few years ago, I think just last generation where someone like you or me who are performance enthusiasts would jump in one of these and there'd be a long sigh of disappointment because they would just be so far away in terms of driving dynamics from their coupe brethren that you just wouldn't enjoy them. But now in cars like this M4 convertible, modern suspension tech and chassis technology has become so good that it's really becoming hard to tell these cars apart. This is particularly the case with BMW M who have simply become the masters of making cars that shouldn't be dynamic feel really dynamic. And this M4 convertible is a great example of that. I know the G Series M4 pretty damn well and I'm well acquainted with the G Series generally. This is the heaviest of the bunch, but I'll be damned if it doesn't feel so similar to that in daily duties and even when driving much faster. Now my last 10 days with this car, it's been horrid weather, just torrential rainfall, loads of puddles, etc. And you would think that a car like this, particularly a convertible, would be completely unusable. But the G-Series, particularly the X-Drives, 
are so good that I've used it every single day and I've used it so much and it's been so effective as well and really the convertible has just felt like the coupe to me and a lot of that is thanks to this brilliant roof but just how far this technology has come along as well in terms of dynamics as well. Now this is a convertible review so we should get the roof off of course and as we said it doesn't take long it's 18 seconds to pull the roof down up to 30 miles an hour. I still need my roof though because my hair is not suited to this life. The other thing that surprised me was the speed because I again thought that it's going to be a lot slower in feeling versus the coupe and the sedan. Preparing launch control. Look at that grip. Sounds good as well. Guys, look at that speed. For an M4 convertible to do 3.1 seconds is insane to me, right? And the thing about this car is it always feels that quick. Even in this week of wetness, even right now the tarmac is still not completely dry. It's not perfect conditions. So whether it's dry, whether it's wet out there, the M4 convertible has just been brilliant at putting down the power. I'm so impressed with this drive train's ability to get grip, to put down power, and just how responsive the engine and this whole package is. The G-Series just never fails to amaze me. So if you're thinking about convertible, certainly, and thinking, oh God, it's gonna be that much slower, you can put those worries aside, at least in this LCI, because God, is this car quick. The gearbox pairs really well to this engine. I mean, look, the pre-LCI was good anyway, but for a torque converter, it still surprises me how responsive the shifts are in this. It feels closer to what CSL was in um, pre-LCI now. Yeah, nice downshifts, almost immediate, and then an immediate upshift as well. It feels, I think, closer now to what CSL was actually, which is nice because that's what I wanted in the normal cars. Now, of course, the other equation here is dynamics because this is BMW M, ultimate driving machine. And again, you do come into convertibles, particularly when the roof is down, expecting a certain type of drive. Let's say less communicative, certainly less rigidity, but the M4 convertible will really surprise you. The body control is awesome. I mean, it's got that typical modern day BMW M ability to make really quick directional changes. The, the one thing I'd put against it would be the steering feedback that hasn't quite got that, that immediate feedback that you'd find in the coupe or in the wagon indeed, in the sedan. Um, I think the extra weight doesn't help. I think the X-Drive, it, it always makes it a bit more numb. And that can be the one distracting fact when you're trying to put on more speed in this car. And it does pick up a lot of speed, so you want steering feedback as quick as possible. But genuinely, that rigidity element really surprised me. Um, I've not been a fan of this ilk of car in this particular part of the market, especially uh, in the last few generations. But this, I've been happy to drive it the last 10 days, and I would be happy to actually use this every single day of the year. It's really proved itself in these 10 days to me. And then of course you've got the whole roof off experience, which is great. And like I said, such a rarity these days, so few convertibles coming out. And to have one come out at this level of performance is better even still. Now, does that help in terms of the sound of the car? You're probably not surprised to hear that it doesn't in the modern day. Even if you go into the highest level, Sport Plus, you're not really gonna hear much more just because you have the roof down. Those days are gone. Other than the occasional burble, you don't really hear much. It is nice and you do hear more than the coupe when you're driving faster, particularly in Sport Plus, but I think, you know, those days are behind us now. You hear more of the speaker sound, really, to be honest. But for me, what I've appreciated more is that I can put the roof down and still enjoy what I enjoy about this series of car. Um, ignoring the fact that I can see the sky. All of that is great and you'll get that in the normal 4 series. I like the dynamics. Right now let's get our uh, roof back down. Now in terms of driving this car more comfortably, what I found really impressive was this car's ability to deal with the elements and actually it was to ignore them entirely. It went about its business of being either quiet and comfortable or fast and really quick whether it was dry or whether it was wet. Now, for those of you 
who drive on the Autobahn, you'll be interested to know I drove this car on the way to driving the new M5 and the M4 CS in a beautiful frozen blue. And I was chasing Joe Achilles, who was in an M3 CS at the time. And they, of course, this car kept up easily. But what was more surprising was how refined it was at those high level autobahn speeds. Despite this being a soft top, which again, lends credence to how much better these are than they used to be. And you're not gonna miss the hard top as far as I'm concerned. Now, modern adaptive suspension, so good, especially with BMW M, you've seen it in M3, you've seen it in the M2, the M4. So driving this car comfortably, no surprise to you, it's actually really good, okay? Again, there's no shortage of luxuries inside even this M4 Cabriolet versus, again, something like the 8 Series. I can put on the assisted self-driving and the car will drive itself as you find in cars like 8 Series, 7 Series, etc. So not only will you find the best and most up-to-date technology within these cars, you also have the car trimmed pretty much as nicely as the car above it. And I think this is great because size of vehicle shouldn't necessarily dictate the quality and the trim level of that vehicle. So it's nice that the top level version of 4 Series, you know, is comparable to 8 Series. I tell you what, as a comfortable daily cruiser, this has been indistinguishable to me from the M4 Coupe or my experience with the M3 Touring. The suspension these days is just so good. This roof is just fantastic that it's just been, I haven't been able to tell the difference between this and driving the Coupe and I'm quite well acquainted with all of the G-Series cars. And again, one more shout out to the steering wheel that I absolutely love compared to my M2 and M3. Um, it's almost worth the price of admission by itself, this. I came into this video thinking, right, LCI, it's not got that much power, not that many changes, a few lights, a steering wheel. I'm gonna say that you probably wanna stick with the pre-LCI. I still don't think that's entirely wrong, but the speed and power that this convertible has shown me really makes me wonder how much quicker the M3 and the M4 are gonna be as well. And that to me makes a much less definitive conclusion than I was expecting. So if you do get the LCI, I think you might actually end up with a much quicker car at the end of it. As for this M4 convertible specifically, in the past, I've always told buyers, stick to the coupe if you care for dynamics. Now, I'm only gonna ask you whether you really wanna have the roof down because for day-to-day -day uses, this car has really proven itself that it can be as good as its coupe, sedan, and wagon brethren. I wasn't expecting that, but it is a testament to how good modern tech has become in terms of dynamics, particularly with BMW M. So don't worry, if you want all the benefits of the M4 and the dynamism, but you do want to have the roof down sometimes, this car's not going to leave you wanting. It's fast, it's dynamic, and it's got all the benefits of a great convertible. So guys, that's my review of this new M4 convertible in the LCI. Hugely surprising how quick this is and maintaining dynamics of coupe. I can't wait to try the M3 in the LCI because I want to see if we can break that sub three second barrier. And as always, if this video has been useful, please do like and subscribe to RBR. And I'll see you guys next time.